fans because it takes a while between the seasons. But that's really because it's not because we shoot particularly long. It's really just because we take time in the writer's room to try to figure out these stories as best we can. And uh, it's trusting that process has, has, has stood us in good stead so far. The patient stuff is kind of the most rewarding. I mean, the entire sequence in 301 is one of my favorite things that I've ever seen on television because I have no <laughs> idea what Mike is doing the whole time he's dismantling that car. And when you finally realize it, you're just like, genius. And like, I'm so glad I stuck with this and you rewarded us for doing that. <laughs> but oh my God, I, it seems like a lot of the show and a lot of the characters in the show are just solving problems. Mm-hmm. They're just really good problem solvers. Why do you think that became such a part of it? Um, you know, it's, I, th- I think it's part of, partially it's just go where other people aren't going. Hmm. You know, if, 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 if other people are, are, uh, synopsizing the story to try to get to the next big scene, why not look at the things that are in between yeah. those, those moments? If everyone else is rushing to get to, you know, an explosion, uh, maybe there's something about the anticipation of the explosion. Oh yeah. Uh, instead of just going for the explosion. And it's I mean it's it's a uh, it's a matter of taste. It's I mean it's it's and it works on our show. I don't know if it would work on other shows, but it seems to I also think people underestimate the fascination of process mm-hmm. and how things get done. I mean, if you've yeah. ever, you know, if you've ever, you know, looked you know, at the at the opening in a in a, um, a fence at, yeah. a, at a big construction site, and you've been kind of fascinated to see how it's act, how this building actually gets put together. You yeah. know, and the people who really know what they're doing. There's something fascinating about that, and especially when that person who knows what he's doing is played by Jonathan Banks, yeah, or by by Bob Bob Odenkirk. Uh, it it holds your interest. Having said that, you know we we try not to have people. It's one of the tricks is we you know we try not to just have them solve a problem. Yeah. Uh, usually solving one problem leads to another problem in our our world. It's it's, <laughs> it's a little bit there's a lot of action and reaction, and we don't always know where it's going. I mean the the the, um, the moment I remember the best was uh, on going back to Breaking Bad again was in um, the episode the train heist episode. Yeah. Um, and we laid out this whole heist, and, and and it was originally a truck heist. And then I think one of the one of the writers said, "God, we've had so many damn trucks." So <laughs> so it became a train, a train, and uh, we you know we spent a lot of time thinking about how we, how you would do this. And then it ended, and they got away with it. And that was well, that seems. What's the what's the cost of this? And that's oh. that's how the whole thing with Drew Sharp came about yeah. because. Uh, that you know, the truth is that all our all the actions we take in this life often have unexpected consequences. Yeah, and when we try to play that out, yeah, it it seems like a, I'm surprised when you say that it isn't all that planned out because it everything does pay off. Like pretty much everything comes back and pays off somehow, which makes me think that you're going back and looking at okay, what do we already have? What can we work with? And there's a couple of notable ones for me. One obviously is Cinnabon. Um, I think you can go back retroactively and watch the episode that you wrote and directed, the penultimate episode, and he says, you know, with any luck, I'll be managing a Cinnabon. Here's my theory, and tell me if I'm right. Okay. Um, he t- Saul takes his picture with the Nebraska driver's license. He knows he's going to Nebraska, and he says, with any luck, I'll do this very specific thing. Then when we see him next, he does that exact same very mm-hmm. specific thing, which I always thought, like, that's weird. Like, that's too on the nose, whatever. And so I watched your episode again. And then I realized, like, the disappearer probably gave him that as one of his life options, right? Yeah, he. I, I think it's a too big a coincidence. It seems. It seems like the disappearer must have said, because uh, uh, Saul says something like, you know, what's what's in Omaha? Yeah, and and and, uh, and the disappearer says, you from now on. But <laughs> I think there must be more more to that conversation later. Uh, where where he says he tells him what the, because obviously also by the way he has to learn how to make the Cinnabons right. and all that there has to there's there's a lot of pieces uh that 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 must have happened and the disappearer has yeah. to be pretty damn thorough for him to fit into this <laughs> into this work world and he has an in at Cinnabon yes well maybe or <laughs> you know, I don't who knows I mean there's 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 a universe of possibilities and that's you know that's always the tricky the 
you know, this is the kind of thing that we talk about in the writer's room is whether, you know, is there, is there a scene in this or that or the other thing? And what's the, what's the right piece of, uh, uh, I don't know, the right gap in the story yeah. for us to, to get, to dig into and what's, what's there. And we explore a lot of dead ends. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, there, there are people in the writer's room who get very tired of, of sometimes oh, some man. of the dead end, the dead ends, but then sometimes the dead end turns out, you know, or a weird idea comes out and it's kind of interesting. Like, you know, who's, there's the Poyos Hermanos. We've got the chicken brothers. Yeah. Who's the other chicken brother? You know, which, yeah. which was kind of, oh, which yeah, it seemed we had the logo and then later on somebody in the writer's room asked the question. Uh, and so that, you know, those are, those are the things that we think about a lot, you know, but you know, the big things are always, you know, how, did this person get to be the way they are now? And that's always, that's always the question is in, you know, in some ways going backwards, you know, a lot of the time in movies, uh, people go back to childhood and, yeah. and you'll see someone's a product, which I think is, there's a grain of truth to it too. There's a grain of, um, there's, there's, a, there are pe- folks are a product of their childhoods. Yeah. But I think at least what we try to do dramatically is to think about people as as the product of the sum total of their decisions that they've made, yeah. rather than being uh, 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 victims of circumstances. Yeah, I don't know what this is. We're getting very heady here, man. Is this I, really this what is, you want to talk this is about? Honestly, why I like the show. This, <laughs> this is what we we talk about this all the time. Yeah. We, this this we talk about. What does this character deserve? Yeah. What should the person do? Um, what should this person do? And then why aren't they doing the thing that they yeah. should do? It seems so obvious to us. I mean, it's, it's, um, that's, this is exactly what we talk about. Yeah. Well, what we try to do on our podcast is, you know, go back through history, usually through history, and find crazy cases or really interesting people who we think haven't gotten their due right. and say this person should get a movie. And it's kind of our excuse to just talk about somebody we think is interesting. Um, but – Listening to something on the break, on the Better Call Saul Insider podcast recently, I thought maybe we're doing this all wrong because yeah. you all do start so much with character and start so much with where is her head at right now? Where is his head at True. right now? Why would they do that? Yeah. How do you start writing? I mean, do you start with something that's going on in your head and trying to sort it out? Do you start with... Well, it's... There's... You know, there's... It, writing is very different if you're starting from scratch. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you're starting from scratch, you know, you start, I mean, you can start anywhere, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, where do you, where do you, you know, if you have a plate full of food in front of you, which, which thing do you start <laughs> eating first? It's, it's in, in, and what I, when I'm writing by myself, the things that I do, what I do is I work on an aspect. I think about mm-hmm. this. I first, I, first of all, I think the big thing for writers, in my opinion, is to know whether you're generating material or whether you're editing. And that's right. a, that's a distinction. It's very it was very hard for me to understand at the beginning. And if you don't know which one you're doing at any particular moment, then especially if you're trying to generate material, if you try to edit while you're generating, then you're just going to stop yourself cold. So the right. way I do it, I just I just write a lot about yeah the movie or the story and I, I write about uh, and if I'm coming up with it out of my own head which which I've done many times uh, you know I'll just write about the characters I'll write about uh, I'll write about their circumstances the places they go the the circumstance what they would do in certain situations I'll just have uh, dialogues between the character I'll just write I'll just uh, you know and sometimes I'm talking I'll just sit there and just write 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 and then and then I'll go over it. Uh, I'll print it out and go to a coffee shop, and I'll start circling stuff that I think is interesting. Yeah. And I'll start thinking, well, wait, if this, if they said this to each other, that means there's this kind of a scene, yeah. and that means I'm learning this about the character. Yeah. And I'm learning that about the character, and then I start editing and saying, well, wait, you know, uh, if I have these two scenes, it seems like there would have to be this in between for this to make sense to me. And then that's, I mean, it's as simple. I mean, it. It sounds kind of free form, which mm-hmm. it is, but the trick, the reason why it's free form is that you, um, uh, you, you can keep switching what, which, which part of your mind you're using depending on how stuck you are. Right. And so you, you know, when people talk about writer's block, it's usually, writer's block is usually a result of, um, feeling like you're editing. You should be, you, you want something to be perfect mm-hmm. and you, you, you need to put something down. 
and then and then edit it. And the the truth is, the more anyway. So that's 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 one way. Mm-hmm. And then you know the other, and it's not that different. The the but the great thing, the thing I love about working on television is that we get uh, a group of people together in a room. We talk about the story, and once you have. Um, the biggest challenge, the biggest creative jump to me on the show is going from a discussion yeah. to what we call a board, uh, a broken mm-hmm. story, having a story which, and we, we spend a lot of time talking about each scene and trying to understand the point of each scene and where the characters' heads are at and, and, and even pitching out dialogue and what are the big turns of the scene. And uh, we put a lot of that in synopsis form on, on three by five cards. There's a whole method to it and then at that point uh a writer goes off and writes and when i when i do this um i find it very liberating because you know the you know what you're going for you know the goal of each scene and so it's a matter of um it's a matter of putting it down on on paper in the most uh, evocative exciting but more important neither one of those words truthful way that i can and the way I do it is I'll each scene I'll I'll basically pick one I'll either write the dialogue or the description first yeah uh, and and then I'll just write usually with dialogue I'll just write pages of dialogue and then like I said before I'll start I'll start editing and say oh that's okay that makes sense and that's though that sucks uh, no and that doesn't <laughs> you know that sucks and that doesn't suck and then I'll try I'll just keep going over it and over and over it again but you know there are some I, I know there are a lot of people who don't work that way yeah uh, we have you know. Tom Schnauz picks a scene in the script that he um, he thinks he can see immediately, and then he writes that one first. And then he he just writes scenes. He writes the scenes, and then um, and then eventually he's down to just a couple of scenes that he finds most difficult. I tend to go linearly. I just start start at the beginning and go to the end. Hmm. You talked on the podcast about a period in your life when you were getting enough. You're writing enough and getting enough things bought. Yeah. To survive, yeah, and keep going, oh yeah, but not that actually was, getting it made. That was, yeah, but I don't want to skip past that because earning a living, yeah, doing anything that you and any getting to earn a living doing something that you find rewarding, yeah. and sort of eat and enjoy, is it's one of the great gifts in yeah. life. I mean, it's really a that's special and, and it's something. I, I had enough years of struggle that I think. Uh, I always go back to appreciating it, and yes, I did. I had I had a lot of trouble. It, it, once I I had, a, I had a my career was not, not a smooth rise, mm. uh, not at all. And I had a, uh, and when when things when I was starting to get hired as a writer, uh, it was very hard to get things made. And part of that is it just you know a lot of these things are accidents of history. Uh, I got into writing. Um, uh, television movies especially for hbo hmm. at just the moment where that was starting to decline there was a big pullback uh, there was a big pullback now it, it i think they're back in a really for the idea of movies for television is back and really forceful uh but there was it was a pullback and also um i tended to pick or work on subjects that weren't obviously uh, audience grabbers. I've always been, you know, there's uh, one of them, uh, one of them, uh, you know, I wrote about, um, uh, the Clinton impeachment was, was, I wrote an adaptation of, um, Jeffrey uh, Tubin's book. Oh my God. Uh, that's a vast a great conspiracy, book. vast conspiracy. Uh, and, and that was, it was, that was a really challenging and fun piece to do for HBO and, and for whatever reason, um, that, you know, kept on almost getting made there. I wrote mm-hmm. it once as a, once as a, uh, two hour and then once as a five hour or s- five, six hour limited series. Oh, uh, I was real proud of those. I thought that they came out great. I wrote about, uh, the Cola Wars, Coke versus Pepsi, uh, which was really Very fun. Cool. I wrote about, um, the breaking of the genome, which Whoa. was, uh, you know, super complicated. And you know, the great thing about these, about writing a true story uh, and it's something that, frankly, my my my, my classmates at USC, <laughs> uh, Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski, figured out long before oh, I boy. did. Uh, they found out that if you write, if you're writing a true story, you can bring a really strong point of view to it. Right, and that's what I found is that in, in some ways you have more freedom to be crazy cinematically if you're telling a true story than if you're trying to get the audience 
to believe in the reality uh, and, and you're spending your cinematic energy on that. So in other words, if you're doing a, a movie that's about a strange other world or a television show, you're spending your your um, story capital on right. making that feel real. You know, if you're, you're, you're 